हेलो एवरीवन नमस्ते टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई थैंक ईच एंड एवरीवन फॉर एक्चुअली हेल्पिंग मी टू बी इन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म आई एम रियली ऑनर्ड आई एम ग्लैड दैट आई एम हियर टॉकिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वांटिंग टू सेंड दिस मैसेज अक्रॉस टुडे माय टॉपिक इज अबाउट हाउ डिड आई फाइंड माय पर्पस एंड फेथ मोर ऑफन देन नॉट द प्रॉब्लम्स दैट वी हैव इन आर लाइफ इट्स समवेयर लिंक्ड टू द सी दैट इज प्लांटेड ड्यूरिंग आर चाइल्डहुड I remember a time in my life when I actually came first in science. The reason I came first was because my science teacher added marks to the science mark sheet to let people know that I was better than the others and she happened to be my mom. I remember feeling extremely embarrassed. In fact, it was very difficult for me to see eye to eye to that friend of mine whom i knew was better than me in science as a child i did not feel good about this what it did to me is i really felt inadequate low on self confidence low on self esteem and not good enough in fact i would not be able to articulate things the way i would want to and there's a story to that too i remember that uh, in the assembly i had to recite a poem and i totally forgot there was that sense of failure what happened was marks became extremely important whatever uh, that defined me whether i was good or bad was all linked to the amount of marks that i got but the point is it is not about my mom right i've matured i've really worked on myself she's going through her own things in her life it's not at all about her it's basically the feelings thoughts that i carried throughout my life what happened was i actually felt that i had betrayed someone that friend of mine and i felt guilty the feeling was that of guilt and you know the thing was that i always had that need for being liked by someone because somewhere i felt that my friends knew what my mom did and maybe they wouldn't like me because of whatever had happened so there was this extra effort of you know trying to be liked by someone seeking approval and there were various ways in my growing up years that i was actually uh, you know having that self doubt all the time as an adult i took my own decisions I in fact rebelled. I went against my parents. I married out of caste. And one of the reasons why I married my husband was he is this epitome of integrity. Brutally honest to the level of irritating. But that's something I loved because I probably didn't see too much of that in my growing up years. And that's it. I went ahead with that decision. Today, of course, before that, as a woman I've played many roles role of a mother wife corporate woman entrepreneur today and as a entrepreneur today I have changed I feel clear I feel confident I feel real I feel simply genuine now I run a company of my own and support a large community of women and uh, with the help of like you know sort of learning from so many mentors coaches and gurus I've been able to influence their lives right from a single woman who came to me with two teenage daughters you know who was looking for a purpose in life because she had lost her husband to a lady who was living with her parents but had not divorced you know they found their purpose being with me having coached them i fuel a vision of helping women become happier and self reliant of also authored a book on 21 day self reliance challenge to help women women become self reliant and in fact the word self reliant as really intrigued by this definition of ralph waldo emerson who said self reliance is the you know way of voicing your opinion irrespective of social norms and that i really resonated with and that's exactly why i put that in my vision Okay so this is of course uh, the slide that you see pre previously was about what I am today so this vision that i have has an emotional connection and it's linked to the story that i was telling you just now of course with the help of a lot of mentors and coaches that it got 
you know, de defined for, my, for myself. What I want to tell you is about my five S's. Because today I feel a lot at peace with myself. I don't really feel the need to be liked by others. I don't really seek that approval, whoever it may be. It doesn't really bother me. So what did I do? Because it's very difficult to let go of your past beliefs and, you know, to become self-reliant. And I'm sure this my 5S model that I use for myself, it'll help not only me that it is helpful, it'll help every woman who has that imposter syndrome. Right? So what are those S's? The first S, I call it, as spirituality. Looking within and getting in touch with that inner source was not something that I had known. I remember actually struggling with my illustrious career that I had, working, you know, 12 hours a day as an HR professional in these MNCs. But to be able to balance that with my personal life and, you know, the struggle that I had with my personal relationship and my husband, I remember crying entire night as to how am I going to do this? How am I going to balance this? And that's when I found my guru and I learned yoga and meditation. What this has helped me do is, it's calmed my senses and helped me keep that emotional balance. So spirituality. The second S. I call it as shameless sharing. And that's one of the reasons why I'm sharing my story today. What happened in my childhood obviously was not in my control. What's happening me to, uh, with me today is something that I want to share. And I want to share my personal experiences. And I feel every individual who's gone through those challenges in their lives should share it. So that, and more so if they've gone through those challenges, so that it makes a difference in people's lives. I feel it's bold to share. I'm not as bold enough. There's so much more to share in my life. So shameless sharing is the second S. The third S, I call it as simply genuine. I think I'm a very a genuine person in that sense and I've become like that more and more. As simple as going for a wedding, if it is that I prefer that I don't want to go, I would rather say no rather than say yes and not go, right? And more than that, what's more important is being genuine with self. I've had those tough conversations with myself, honest conversations with myself. I've made, made notes, jotted those points down, those bottled up feelings I had with myself of the past. And I've really, you know, dealt with it to become more self-reliant. And therefore, the need to be liked and, you know, the extra uh, expectation from others is not there anymore. So simply genuine is third S. The fourth S is serve with my heart. You know, a lot of them tell me, Preeta, you're totally heart. And yes, I am. If I have to make a choice between logic and kindness, I always go for kindness because kindness, I believe, wins. Why? Because when you are kind and when you make a lot of mistakes, people forgive you. I make a lot of mistakes because I serve with my heart and people forgive me. And what I've also realized is when you start doing this more and more, you're actually supported by grace. And grace helps you to improve on a day-to-day -day basis rather than like push yourself to that extreme. And that's the reason why I feel this really worked for me. The fifth and the final S is sincerity towards action. People call it commitment towards action. It's the very same thing. The definition is whatever goal that you have every day, whether you like it or not, if you are sincere about the action and the task that you've told that you'll do for yourself, then step by step, step by step, step by step, you go reach your goal, you become closer to your goal. And especially if you act sincerely with your heart, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. You just feel so fulfilled. So I wrote my goals down. I found its purpose with the help of my mentors and coaches. It was not a one day exercise. It was a lot of sessions through which, you know, it was linked to the story of mine. Right. And then here's where I am doing what I really love doing and reaching to the you know, goal that I've really made for myself. So the question that I have for all of you, each one of you, 
is what is your purpose what are you doing why are you doing what you're doing because the reason you need to find this out is you need to sit down dig within find out what is that brain wiring that you need to change what is that area that you need to heal in your life it takes time and effort to do that but once you do this you just are in it you know wanting to reach your goal without any effort though there is effort right so this is something you definitely need to question yourself and my final question is may sound stupid but quite deep as to are we dead or alive what do you think i think i'm alive what do you all think i'm sure all of you are alive whatever age that you are in if you are alive what it means is that there is a purpose for your life and that is the reason you are alive you know i tell my parents this my father is 86 my mother is 79 going through a lot of challenges they are alive they have a purpose they still need to be at it so the point is let's sit write our goals down find our purpose and with that sincerity and commitment towards action we definitely can reach our goal thank you so much namaste and thank you so much for giving this platform to spread this idea of finding your faith to the international audience and everyone in the world listening to this find your purpose and faith thank you so much